Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video we're going to land Analyst Kerman on the moon. I've decided to just land Analyst. He's there, uh, just sort of floating a little bit higher up in the cabin because the cabin has been resized for realism overhaul. But anyway, we are going to land Analyst Kerman on the surface of the moon alone and then pick up the other two rescuees. And I think we'll land analysts somewhere over here because then it'll have communication back to Earth and also be in daylight. So right now we're here. So we'll decouple from the the helper stage, the tanker stage, and unlock these fuels now. We're a little bit short on power, but it should be all right. So unlock. We will not waste any time. Nope. There we go. All right. Electricity is running out though. We'll have to watch out for that. And I will activate this engine again. We still can't plant a flag though, but we also don't have any particular contract to land a Kerbal on the moon yet. Okay, well, I think we'll take that. Hopefully it's not gonna be too tight. We do have a long burn time to worry about, and we're really close to the surface in this case. We're over the Sea of Tranquility right now, but it's a little bit dark to land here. It does feel like a hill could just come up and smack us right now, though. Getting close to the daylight side, but not there yet. And we're rather low. How many ignitions? Lots of ignitions. I think we'll... Uh, Sort of pitch up a little bit and try and avoid some hills I see in front. Ignition failure. <laughs> well, it was just an ignition failure. We do still have the abort engines this time. Okay, that should do as much as I need to do. I think. Landing over here will probably be fine. There's a crater here. Trying to maintain pitch so that we can get to this crater over here. At the very least, but we want to have sunlight, so I'm waiting for that. Not clear when that's going to happen. I mean, it probably ought to have happened by now, right? Where is the sun? Well, we're sort of here. Maybe in a little while. There's the depot, and there's analysis debris right there. Okay, we are recharging, so it sees the sun on the horizon somehow. Okay, just on the crater's edge right now. Crawl down. It's just called the moon's major craters. Not a specific one. Well, believe it or not, I'm gonna try to avoid these rocks over here and try to land over there. Gotta put a little mild Neil Armstrong, I guess. Still looks sort of rocky over here, but not as bad as back there. It'll always look rocky, I suppose. Yep, just when you think you've cleared some rocks, more rocks appear. The moon is sort of fractal that way. Okay. All right. Oh, a bit of a bounce, but okay. RCS off. Okay. Well, we didn't have any ladders. <laughs> okay. Electricity running out. Well, he's got enough. And no ladder. Okay. Well, can't plant a flag. EV report. Keep. Surface sample. Keep. Jetpack alone can't work, but if we jump, it can. Uh, well, we could have climbed that, but I think we need to jump a little bit closer here. Okay, board. And crew report. 
keep. Okay, well, we're 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 actually in the wrong position to get sunlight. Um, so we're in at the bottom of crater. It's below the horizon in the crater, but also our solar panels are facing the wrong way entirely. So we should probably get back up again as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, our depot is over there, and we need to meet up with it. I don't know if waiting some time will, like, get some rays. Uh, it's probably better not to test this out. Okay. Uh, so, I'll switch back to SAS for now. And RCS on. And ignition. And rotate. We got all about the sun. When I was trying to land. Okay, well, this time the engine has worked all the way. We are close enough for me to see that. Uh, if it quit now, uh, the RCS could even handle it. Uh, okay, we're going too high on the Apple Apps Ascend. I could have tilted down, but. Okay. Well. It's going to be tough like this. Where's Munber anyway? Well, we can't get... Well, we can get Munber into this, so all right. Let, let, maybe we can rendezvous with Munber first and then deal with the depot. Uh, but Munber is also in a really low orbit. Let's just get into a high orbit and wait, maybe. This has capacity for two. This is the advanced Mark I lander can, if I recall. Yes, so... That might be also why Ironless is floating up there, because the second Kerbal would be lower. Oh, uh, looks like we aren't recharging as well as I'd like. We might need the depot's help just to recharge. We got down to too low a level. The nighttime side of we could go even higher, and then the daylight side would sort of last longer because the horizon would be shorter. Um, doesn't really want to say. <laughs> okay, well we'll try and boost up on this side so that we get daylight for longer. Okay, well not clear to me where that's gonna be enough, but we'll see. Yep, we just barely ran out of power right there. I don't think this is going to be good enough. Uh, well, we're going to budget it a little bit. I'm going to switch over to the MH and Mon 3 Depot. And we are going to try and get to this as quickly as possible. This does have a lot of Delta V. Not that this depot has been a powerhouse of electric charge, mind you, but it doesn't consume much and it has solar panels, so we'll assume it can help. Okay, well, we'll use an ignition. Ignition. Well, we'll be practically topped off with power by the time we meet the lander, so that will be good. Okay, ignition. Uh, somehow the target has a whole bunch of electric charge it didn't have before. Um, something about electric charge tracking when we're not focused on it may not be quite right. <laughs> um, talk about that. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> happy is electric charge. Okay, and connection. All right, let's shut down the lander engine. Make sure we're controlling from this. Oh no, <laughs> I clicked undock instead. No, 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 no. Okay, no, I meant control from this. Control from here, yes. There we go. All right, so now we'll meet up with Kerbal number two 
And the tough one will be Kerbal number three, who is all the way up there, Orlorf. But Munber first. Okay, and yeah, this is where we switch sides. Okay, so let's pull our orbit down a little bit. Well, that seems close enough to me. Well, we're slightly drifting towards it. I'm gonna rotate so that the entryway is facing it. Over here, it is one of these things. AES pods from uh, the USI mod. It's a miracle a Kerbal can actually fit in there. They actually made that pod too small for a Kerbal. Not enough electric charge. I don't know why they never get the electric charge, but... Um, anyway, there is where we need to go. And electric charge does not hurt the EVA pack. Grab and board. Okay, so now we have two Kerbals, which is all this can carry, so we must visit the the return module. Well, oh, it's all the way up there. So we'll just get the return module to come down and meet us, or should we go up to meet it? Hmm. Because we have to get to Orloff's capsule anyway. We might as well go up to meet it. Well, it looks like it'll just be the next orbit, and we'll initially just do this. Okay, one kilometer with those maneuvers plotted. Okay. Try that. I don't know about this burn indicator. That start burn time can't possibly be right. Well, we'll try it now. Okay, well, that's as good as I can do that one. Wait for maneuver up there to see exactly how close we're actually approaching. Okay, getting plenty of ignitions out of this engine. Hopefully it'll become a reliable engine in the future. But when we arrive at the return capsule, we're going to have to make some decisions. Like, do I transfer the fuel from this into the lander so that we can use it? Or do we keep this as is so that it can be a tug for future missions? Depends how much from the turn capsule we expect to spend to get up to Orlof, Orlorf. And then return, of course. Let me just switch to it and see how much it has right now. I mean, I think 2,100 meters per second should be enough to do everything. I don't think we need to transfer anything to it. The lander will have a little bit. So yeah, I think we'll leave the depot on its own after we finish the rendezvous. Oh, uh... Should get started already. Oh, there is the return capsule. Okay, I think the rest we'll do just with the lander. I do wonder whether we can actually get the science over into the return capsule though. I'm trying to remember how that works. I don't think it goes over when we transfer to Kerbals, but we can't go outside here, grab it, and then go to the exterior of that pod and plop it in, because there's no hatch on that. So, yeah. Okay, and... Docked. Alright, so that part is fine. Now, can I actually transfer them? into the relevant part. <laughs> this one. I might need chip manifest to make sure I can do stuff like this. Okay, says Alice Kerman moved. 
All right, because the cabin is actually underneath this shell, so we have to click underneath the shell, or maybe the windows would work uh, in order to get through. But actually, the windows probably won't because the collider of the shell goes above those. Anyway, so they're transferred. The problem is uh, this still has the science. <laughs> um, so how do we move that over? I guess I should have had a science container somewhere on this side, but I did not. Mm, okay, let's keep that. We can trans uh, transmit the EV report. I thought we did a crew report. I missed that. I was in too much of a hurry. I'm going to get chip manifest in here and see whether it can transfer the science over. I forget if it can do that. I never tried. But yeah, I'm going to... A new mod. Uh, first new mod since episode 9. We are going to try and put ship manifest in. That'll make the crew transfers easier too. But yeah, let me see if that's possible. Okay, so ship manifest. Science. Lander can to the spacecraft. Okay. I don't know what not her means, but maybe that means transfer? Um, let's see. That one had been transmitted, so we can't do that. Uh, okay, so we can just click here and review stored data. All right, so we've got it in here, so ship manifest worked for that purpose. All right, we still need to carry this with us, otherwise we are not going to be able to uh, do what we need to do with the... pick up the last crew member. So make sure we're controlling from here. That is on. All right. Now we have to get to Orlorf. Well, Apoapsis and Ascending Node are pretty close to each other. Uh, let me see how much it would take to just correct this over here. Probably not necessary. But maybe we can encounter it over there instead. Uh, well, then the apoapsis ends up over here. That's not good. Uh, I think we'll just go out from here instead. And we'll wait one orbit. So it's like that. It'll be ahead of us. Still. And then right around here we'll just up and then meet it on the second go around. Okay, anyway, uh, we'll do that when the time comes. Okay, and ignition. Okay, so we're gonna do this burn and meet up with it over there. Um, probably could plot something even better, but we'll just expedite here. That should leave us with enough. Okay, let's see how close we can get here. Eh, it's just the 40 kilometers that it was saying before. So we're going to have to help that out a bit once we get there. But on we go. Okay, well now that's a close approach. Orlorf had better be grateful about all this. Pilot, engineer. Yes, it'd be nice if Orlorf was a scientist. Okay, well, that's as close as I'm gonna get for him. And it, uh, Orlorf is a scientist, and it's a her, Orlorf. Also in one of these uh, USI AES pods. Uh, those things are death traps. Okay. Also, way too small. <laughs> okay, and board. Alright, and I'll use ship manifest to transfer her over. Right, and with that we should be able to separate off. Interesting that it still registered the old signs that we had already transmitted, but yeah. Okay. Undock. 
and this has 1,379 and let's not waste any time let's see about getting home we're in this high orbit though as far as supplies are concerned let's just check 10 days so that's okay okay looks like we can go direct from here instead of making some sort of correction if the inclination was too weird, it might have been awkward. And we'll just aim for about 58 kilometers there. So in 12 hours, we get to make our transfer back. Let's just make sure we get power until then. The lander has a little bit of fuel left. And also the 31 ignitions on this engine as well as the backup engines. So it's possible to maybe send some more fuel out to it and then work with it. We'll see. And ignition. Okay. And... Uh, I can't read that right there. Oh, too far. Okay. Well, let's be on our way back then have our trajectory. Oh, let's point our solar panels at the sun. These solar panels that do not turn. Oh, let me check. Technically, we should not have hibernate and warp on. It shouldn't be a problem, but let's just verify. Yeah, it's not a problem. Well, except on the highest level of time warp, you can see it's consuming power. I think if we have hibernate and warp act on, uh, when we go to the fifth step here, it doesn't mess up the electric charge thing. So we'll keep hibernate and warp on, but it's balanced even without it on. It's just that I want to be able to time warp freely. Well, now it doesn't matter much anymore anyway. And around here, we'll use some of our fuel to slow down a bit just for safety's sake. And also we need to fix that periapsis. Oh, so we get to test the engine more. Alright, that'll be good enough. Okay, service module... Separation. Right. Okay, here we go. Okay, service module explosions. And heating. Serious heating. I wish the ablator ablated. Uh, okay, the overheating warning is dissipating. We are landing in the tropics somewhere, it said. Uh, well, it's not exactly tropical, it's, uh, it's on the border of the Sahara Desert, but close enough to the coast, I suppose, that's not too bad. Okay, we are through the worst of it. Okay, let's see about the aero cap. Let me just put an extra stage in there just in case. Okay, aero cap is off. Okay, just flowing down to the edge of the Sahara Desert here. Then say where we had to recover them, except on Earth. Earth is fairly general. <laughs> the savanna. Well, it's sav the savanna, actually, not the desert, so. So, there we have it. A successful moon landing mission. Um, we didn't actually send a Kerbal. We rescued three of them. One of them landed there. We will have to try the legit sending a Kerbal to land on a moon thing in the future, but maybe we'll do something else prior to the next time we try this. Let's recover vessel and uh, we'll recover to the VAB so that we can reuse it. So that should take care of some of these rescue alarms. Yes, they just all disappeared. We've got funds. We got science, 
and we've got more crew. All right, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.